Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are and where you're watching from. This is Mary Ondoma Isaac again on Hope Alive. Um, I just want to encourage somebody out there. That's what Hope Alive is all about, encouragement, support, help, and just to tell you that it is well, it will be well, that God is in control, God has got your back, and whatever it is that you're going through, it's not the end of the road. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. God is at the other end waiting to bring you through whatever you're going through. Um, precisely on the 30th of September 2015, which is just a couple of days ago. Um, the last couple of days, I have been a bit down, have been struggling because all the memories were just coming back and flooding my mind and my heart and um, something happened this afternoon I took my little daughter um, to nursery as I dropped her off and I was still meditating on all the issues and all the things that happened in my life then where my journey you know before then and after then so I just dropped her off which is coming out of the nursery and I saw this lady with these two cute twins identical twins two girls and they look so cute and i admired them and instantly the stab came back you know because as i said the last couple of days i've just been on this low thing because of all the experiences playing back his mind and everything so that you know just like that picture came to as a reminder i believe um i i um uh, well i want to say the devil did that but then it hit me more when I saw those things. I got back in my car and I was almost welling up in tears. Because exactly three years ago, I got a terrible news. I was pregnant with the twins, identical twins. I've always dreamt to have twins. I've always wanted twins all my life. It came at the time I wasn't expecting. But because I found out, when I found out they were twins, two girls, I was so excited. Planning and excited, but everything in twos only from the 30th of september this is almost 29 weeks of gestation to be told that one of them had passed the week before i done the scan they were perfectly fine they were perfectly okay a couple of days ago meaning even the day before so i felt them kicking everything was fine i i will never be able to describe the pain except someone who has gone through it will understand the pain of hearing that you've just lost a child while i was still dealing with that pain i was asked to do an mri mri result came out to say that the second twin has been severely, has a severe um, um, brain injury as a result of clot, blood clot that has come from the diseased sister. And this happened only in 30% of the time. And for some reason, we fell into that 30% of statistics that said this is what happened with identical twins. If one passes, then this happens to the second one. In spite of all my prayers and cry to God, the MRI came out to confirm that. How do you deal with such situation in just a few couple of days? That you just lost a baby and the second one, you are advised to terminate. I was advised to terminate because in the doctor's words, this child will never have a good quality of life. She saw brain, severely brain damage, and they gave me a whole so lost list of things that she would never be able to do. So the best advice was to terminate. This is already at this point over 29 weeks. What do I do? How did I get here? What did I do wrong? Where did I get it wrong? God, where are you? Couldn't you fight? Couldn't you defend? Don't you hear prayers anymore? What did your word say about casting away our youngs? What did your word say about miscarriages and stillbirth? Where, what happened? I just didn't even have an answer for it. 
The journey between then and when my daughter Jemima was eventually born was the longest journey of my life. Every day being reminded by the consultants, because I was twice every week I was making journeys to see specialists. And each time I was being reminded how bad her situation was. A couple of times I had to spend some nights in hospital. So today all that came back. I had lots of questions again. God, why did you bring me so much joy and just took it away? But then I sat there and again the same strength that I encountered three years ago came back. I reminded myself of God's promises and words. I got a hold of myself more so quickly because I was about to get drowned in such more sorrow and pain and questions. But I remembered God's promises. I remembered his word. I remembered his covenant. I remember his faithfulness. By the way, today Jemima is a living testimony that God is real. Jemima defied all odds. At, the, at about three or four months, she was supposed to have a surgery in her brain because she was retaining fluid. That was cancelled. It never happened. God intervened. It never happened. Jemima was not supposed to hold up her head. She was not supposed to be able to swallow. She was not supposed to be able to talk, to walk, and do all that. But today, Jemima is talking, talking so well. Jemima can breathe. Jemima can yeah, by herself. Jemima just... Twice you had several tests concerning a hole in the heart. All that has been written off completely. Jemima was supposed to have issues with her ears. She's been tested over and over. Her ears are perfect. Jemima is walking. It is what God has proved himself. And each time the doctors have not been able to understand how. And we've carried out the MRI test three times. And each time I trusted God and said, it will change. It never changed. The results were still the same. Terrible. But this girl is not displaying any of those things. That is the faithfulness of God. That is the mercy of God. So today, rather than looking at the things I didn't have, I chose to look at what I do have. The blessing of God in Jemima. Rather than crying over Janice, I chose to cry. This year is, well, it's a, it's a mixture, but at the end of the day, it's more of a gratitude of God's faithfulness. Sometimes we look at what we have lost, what we don't have, rather than what we do have. I choose to focus on the good. I choose to focus on God's mercy and God's faithfulness. I don't have Janice today, but I do have Jemima. But my faith brought me through. My faith kept me strong. It wasn't an easy period in my life. It wasn't easy. Because coupled with these issues, there were lots and lots of other issues going on in my life, which I don't know when I will be able to tell, share them. But trust me, lots of oil is like everything hell let loose upon my life in 2015. I don't know how I survived it. But I'm here today by the mercy and the grace of God. And all those issues, God has turned them all around. Every single one of them. I just want to encourage whoever is out there today. No matter what you're going through, no matter what the doctors are telling you, no matter how crippling that news is, hold on to God. He never fails. Hold on to God. It will end in praise. That struggle will end in praise. That pain will end in praise if you don't give up, if you don't fail, if you don't faint. If you held on to his word, even in tears, hold him. Even if you are tempted to doubt, because I was several times. Hold God. I say, God, I don't understand this. I don't know why this is happening to me. I don't know why all this is happening. But I know you've got my back. I know your thoughts was me are thoughts of good and not evil to bring me to an expected end. And God did it. Ever since it's been one testimony of God's mercy and faithfulness. He told me, he said, don't waste this pain. And I'm not wasting my pain now. And you dare not waste yours either. Whatever it is that you're going through, don't waste it. It's for a purpose. Use it for something great. Use it for something good. God bless you.
I just want to pray with you if you listen to this video. If you haven't made Christ your Lord and Savior, that's where you start from. Make him your anchor. The rain and the flood will come on the house on the rock. It will come on the house on the, on the sand. The difference is the, the foundation. Where is your foundation? Where are you standing? Where is your hope? Where is your confidence? The Bible says don't cast away your confidence, your faith and all that because it has great recompense. There's a great reward for knowing Christ and holding on to Christ. I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's just few prayers away. Believe in Christ. Put your faith in him. Believe in his sacrifice on the cross. Believe that he died for you, for your salvation. Confess your sin and invite him into your life. And you will see him calm your storm. You will see him cause you to walk upon the waters. You will see him bring you through and bring you out of the grave. He did it for Lazarus. The Lord bless you this afternoon. And please, as I always say, subscribe to my channel for more inspiring and encouraging words. Leave a comment. Share with others who might need this word to stay encouraged. The Lord bless you and the Lord uphold you. Thank you. Bye.